Hey everyone, this is a recap of our Biblio adventure to Boston in September 21st, 2023. We went to explore Nathaniel Hawthorne sites to wrap up our Scarlet Summer. Our first stop was in West Roxbury, where we visited the site of what was Brook Farm back in the day, uh, a commune, utopian society that Nathaniel Hawthorne helped found and lived at for a while. This is also a site where Civil War soldiers trained. We're standing here in front of what had been Margaret Fuller's cottage. She wasn't a member of the commune, but she visited. And here you can see the foundation. That's all that's left of what had been her cottage. You can see the door lying there. Um, here's a f drawing of what the cottage had looked like. And uh, Emily even saw a snake when we were hiking back in the woods to find it. Next stop was Boston, and here we are in the historic district. That's the Old South Meeting Hall to the right, and we were there to visit the Old Corner Bookstore. And here we are inside of the Old Corner Bookstore, which is now a Chipotle, where we had lunch. Um, well, we got lunch there, and we ate it out in the park because it was such a gorgeous day. That's the Old State House with Ben Franklin, and this is also the site of the first public school in what became the United States of America. Then we walked over to King's Chapel Burial Ground where there are lots of big names uh, buried there. But the person we were coming to see was a woman who may have inspired Nathaniel Hawthorne's Scarlet Letter, Elizabeth Payne. This is her headstone and you can see that stylized A which uh, folks think may have influenced Hawthorne. This is the front of the Athenaeum. So everything is really walkable in historic Boston, and we were really happy to get to the Athenaeum in time for their three o'clock tour that they do every day. It's really a fabulous, fabulous place, and we really recommend the tour if you can get there. That's uh, the goddess Athena, who the Athenaeum is named after, the, the entire movement. This gallery, we just loved these paintings and got a thorough introduction or summary of background to each. So the first Hawthorne sighting we had at the Athenaeum was this beautiful artist book by Mindy Belhoff. The Athenaeum was a place where Hawthorne actually went to read and do research. And um, this artist book by Belhoff, um, what she does is she rereads canonical texts through a feminist lens. And one of them is the Scarlet Letter, which is no surprise. Uh, look at that gorgeous letterpress A right there. Um, the artist designed that A. She set the type by hand and then printed it. Artist books are usually one of a kind items and the Athenaeum is collecting them. It's one of their main uh, focuses of building their collection right now. Next up is a painting of Annie Fields, who was a major literary figure in the 19th century. She was married to James Fields, and after he passed away, she struck up a relationship with the writer Sarah Orne Jewett, and they spent the rest of their lives together. And coming up are just some shots uh, during our tour. This was in a room um, with some of books from George Washington's collection. The stairway was gorgeous, of course. They do also have elevators. And I don't remember what floor this was, but each floor has different, you know, fiction, nonfiction. This was a recently renovated area. We found Dante, of course. You know, library is complete without Dante. Um, this was a collection of books sent by the King of England with books he wanted everyone to read, mainly theological. Satan and Jesus. More shots from the library. This is uh, their periodicals area there in the middle. This beautiful spiral staircase with Emily was a delight. And this is up on the, the top floor, which is not open to the public. And um, a lovely person allowed us to go and explore, knowing that we were really book enthusiasts and librarians and all that good stuff. So just some shots without people. Um, you could go up to these little half floors 
and where the floors are made out of uh, glass, which is a 19th century innovation. It may have been earlier, I'm not sure, that let light in to the lower stacks. And there we are with our little feet. Um, so it was just a joy to be able to explore this area. It's uh, uber quiet too. There's no clicking of keyboards or anything. It is just pure reading on that floor. They have a little balcony where you can see the uh, uh, sit outside and see a view of the city. And then we did look at the Hawthorne Holdings. They did have a lot. Um, this was one book that we pulled because of some of the writing that was in it at the very end. A person wrote uh, a bit of a summary, um, although the Blythdale romance wasn't her cup of tea. We looked at Edith Wharton as well. The Gods Arrive is a book by her that we hadn't heard of before. And a lot of her books were there replacing missing copies. Uh, her books were highly circulated. That's a portrait of the first librarian. This is in another area. This is in the new book area that is not open to the public, but a different employee let us in there to look around. And then after the Athenaeum, we headed to Pinckney Street, where four different literary figures lived once upon a time, not all at the same time. This first is where the Thoreau family lived for a while when Henry David was a kid. Coming up next is the site of Elizabeth Peabody's kindergarten. She's the one who started the kindergarten movement in the United States. It looks like a, a split home now, uh, maybe a couple in there. And this is where Louisa May Alcott lived when she was a teenager. It's where her first, she lived here when her first short story was published and when her first novel was published. And there's a little plaque. Um, about her and the only plaque on the block that we noticed. And here we're standing in front of a home where Nathaniel Hawthorne lived while he was working at the Boston Custom House. He lived there with a friend and we love boot scrapes. <laughs> and that's just a shot of the block as we're leaving it. We went around the block and we're heading back um, towards the parking garage when we spotted this little free library. Of course, we had to go in there and check it out. Lots of good things in there, and we were excited to see a copy of Hester, which is quite appropriate since that was one of the books of our Scarlet Summer. We walked through the Boston Common, which is a huge park, and got to see The Embrace, which is a tribute to Coretta Scott King and Dr. Martin Luther King, their love and leadership. And then we walked over towards the Brattle Bookshop, not to see the bookshop, but to see the building next door, which was the location of Elizabeth Peabody's bookstore. Very important to see that plaque. Brattle Books was closed when we got there, um, so we missed out on seeing the carts again, but next time. Uh, that's a Boston Library location. Our parking garage is right across the street from that. And so here we end in the parking garage. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you make it to Boston soon if you haven't been there. It's a great literary city. And we're going to leave you with a little bit of a literary quiz or test. Can you name this literary figure? Leave your answers below in the comments. Good luck and thanks everyone.